Alright, in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to project a curve onto the mandible of the skull and then create an extrusion in a design of your choosing. So, um, again, understand that you have multiple objects in the scene, a mandible, I call this the cranium, and we have a bunch of teeth. To view all these, and you're going to need to know where this is, you got to have your outliner available. So if you go to Windows, Outliner, your outliner will pop up and show you everything in your scene. So if I were to expand this, you'll see cranium, mandible, and all of the teeth that I didn't rename because that would take forever, but I guess it's possible. Also know that this little icon here represents a polygon mesh um, as opposed to maybe a nerve surface, which um, we will not be dealing with in this case. Um, we'll just be dealing with curves. So I'm going to leave that collapsed. And I'm going to create my curve. And to do so, I'm going to go to my front view. Uh, for those of you that don't know how to get to this marking menu, just hold down spacebar, left click, and you can go to all kinds of different things within this um, marking menu. So if I go to my front view, we get into our orthographic camera. And the orthographic camera will allow me to um, see things very flat. And just I'm just using this for reference to create a scale uh, of the curve that I'm going to use. So in order to create a curve, I'm going to go to Create Curve Tools. I like to use the EP Curve Tool. And I'm going to just draw a simple design, making sure I'm not overlapping. Um, any of my curves and then I'm going to move it into position. If I hold down hit W I get my move tool or my move uh, gizmo some people call it. And I'm going to center my pivot so that my manipulator is in the middle of my curve. And to do that we go to modify center pivot. I have a hotkey here on my shelf and I'm going to move it to the front. As you can see, it disappears, and that's because it should be like right in the middle of my skull. But if I go to my right view and pull it out front, you'll see that it is indeed out in front of my skull now. So now if I go back to front, I can see my curve. And now I'm going to alter my curve so that it fits on the part of the jaw that I want it to fit on. Um, to do that, if I hit F9, I get my little control points, and I can move portions of the curve onto my skull. I uh, might move this one down a little bit. I'm not going to be too particular with this. Um, but again, just grabbing these, I can move things around a little bit. Hit F8 to get out. And now I'm going to go to my perspective view. And I'm going to look at what I have. Um, understand that when we project a curve onto a mesh and we look at our options you have a bunch of different options. I like to use project along current view direction. You can experiment with these different planes um, but with project along current view direction I have to actually rotate my camera and manipulate my curve so that when I hit that project curve and close button I know that this curve is going to go straight, straight back and through my skull. And if I do it right now, you can see these tips would go way back to the back of the mandible. This one and this one would go, would go way back there. So I'm actually going to squash my curve a little bit to make sure it gets to that front portion. And then all I have to do is shift click my mandible, hit project curve and close. And you'll see that I have a curve that has been projected onto the topology of that mandible mesh. Understand that when I did that, that curve actually goes straight through my skull. So if I if it went straight through here and it hit the back here, it's going to create other curves that we don't want. So now this is where the outliner comes in. If I go to my outliner and I expand, I can click on the curves that it should have created. So here's one that I can't really see created something. I hit 4 to go to wireframe. I hit 5 to go back to shaded. And I know I don't need that. All I want is this curve right here. And then I go back to that curve and you'll see that it looks pretty good. If I click curve 1, you'll see that the curve that I projected onto the mandible turns pink. That means 
that it still has history on. So whatever I do to my original curve, it will change the curve on my surface. So I go back to F9 and I move this up. That little curve, little arc at the top will move. If I can move this down, that'll move down. I don't want too extreme curvature here because when I do my extrude, I don't want a bunch of overlapping geometry. So I'm going to leave that just like that. And I'm going to select my curve that's on the surface and delete my history. Edit, delete by type, history. Now this curve no longer has any control or power over that curve that is on the mandible. Now what I want to do is create a circle curve because I'm going to use that and it's going to follow this curve like a cylinder and create geometry that protrudes outwards a little bit. Um, that will create an interesting little design on the mandible. So to do that I go to create NURBS primitives circle and that curve will show up in the middle of my skull because that's the center of the world and right now I can see that that's too big so I hit R to get my scale manipulator and scale it way down in the middle now the next trick is to get it um, to be sort of perpendicular to the beginning of my curve here remember curves have direction I drew my curve from left to right therefore this curve is also going from left to right so I want to position this circle right at the beginning of my curve. So I could go to other views and start moving my curve around to the beginning of my, of my curve. If I hit 4, I can see through it. I can select um, that curve that's on the surface. I can see that my beginning is like actually one of these two way down here. And I'm going to move my circle over there and sort of go back and forth so that I can see where that circle is. And then I'm going to go back to perspective, hit frame 5, and again move it to try to get it to the beginning of my curve. That looks pretty, cl pretty close. Now I think it's too big, so I'm going to again scale it down. Oops. Scale it down. Keyboard's not working. I'm trying to hit Alt. There we go. So I can rotate. Come on. Alt. Rotate. There we go. Now I'm going to rotate it hitting E so that it's perpendicular to that curve. Now I'm going to move it down just a little bit more so it's outside the beginning of that curve and maybe out here. And when I look at it, I want the middle point of that curve to be pretty close to where that beginning of my projected curve begins. And now to create the geometry, I'm going to control click or shift click my projected curve. And we have to go to our surfaces, extrude options and change some settings. Now I've already changed some of these in the past so take note that I want a tube, I want it at path, closest endpoint. So we want to match all of these settings. I believe some of them are default um, but because I've changed them already they sort of stayed the same. I want a complete curve range and I want to output to polygons. And when I do that I get another box that, that shows up that I can control and I want to create quads and I want to do it by count and in this case I've discovered that a count of about 200 works to begin with and we can reduce that or add later but for now I'm going to do 200 and I'm going to click extrude you're going to see that that circle went all along that curve and created this output geometry and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look very closely at if, to see if I have any overlapping geometry and you can see here that it gets a little bit ugly which is not good um, I want to try to work that out so that doesn't happen but also know that this geometry has history as well so if I click on my original curve and hit, again hit F9 and I start moving these guys around my geometry output will change too which can be kind of cool it can also create a mess I'm going to leave it alone, hit F8 to get out, hit 5 to get the shaded. And I'm going to delete my history on the polygons that I just created by going
going to edit delete by type history and now what I want to do is I'm going to reduce this mesh um, and I also want to fill the holes that are at the beginning and the end so this thing appears hollow and I'm going to do that first actually I'm going to go to mesh mesh fill hole and you'll see that those holes were filled now I'm going to select it again and go to uh, mesh reduce options and I have my percentage of reduction at 50% I'm going to hit apply and you'll see that it sort of cleans up my geometry I can do it again to get a real clean one and in this case I can go in with F9 and I can move things around yeah it's a little jagged it's not quite as smooth but for our project um, this will work pretty good so I'm going to hit F8 to get out of that also, I should have done this at the beginning, but make sure you save your workout appropriately with each thing that you add, just in case something doesn't go well. You can always revert back to that saved version. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to name this Harley Skull 01 Extrude. I'm going to save that. Now I want to test this in MakerBot software to make sure that what I've created here will print. And to do that, I need to combine everything. So I'm going to close this window. And when I say combine everything, I mean my meshes. So I need to combine them and triangulate them before I export as an OBJ. And in order to do that, I'm going to hide my NURBS curves so I don't see them anymore. And I'm going to drag select all three, or excuse me, all of my mesh and go to mesh combine apply now they're all in one as one object and now I have to triangulate so I'm going to go mesh triangulate and you'll see that I have all triangles now and now I can export this by going to file export selection options and change my file type to OBJ defaults are good export selection and I've created another folder where my exports are going. I'm going to call this 2 extrude export selection. And I'm going to launch my MakerBot software. If you have not installed MakerBot print, um, I'll run you through that. I'm going to go to File, Insert File and double click to insert my skull typically it comes in like this i've got to rotate an x plus 90 and i'm going to zoom in right click to see that my mesh showed up well something went wrong with it so now i've got to go back and figure out why you can see it didn't really come in that great oh well back to the drawing board so i realized when that mesh was created that it came in black and I just assumed for some reason that Maya had assigned my black shader to it so I went back in and tried to assign my white shader to it and it says no no no, no. it's already assigned to it and if I look up in my attribute editor it says that the white shader is there so the only other conclusion is that the surface is inverted which will create um, a bad result when we try to print so I want to reverse my surface direction by going to mesh display reverse and now if I combine everything show nerve surfaces mesh combine mesh triangulate and then I export it we'll see what happens in MakerBot software so I've inverted that surface and now you can see that it comes in nice and that should just fine. We'll test that out.